All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Dennis with the Eureka team, and I have the privilege of introducing all of you to Eureka's most recent release as of this recording. Uh, we're gonna spend the next five or 10 minutes, I'd guess, going through uh, Eureka's new release, which is called Illuminate. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna go through a series of slides here um, we've laid out some of our favorite features that we will be releasing uh, here this as of this recording we're at April 2021 um, so I'm gonna give you just a quick read through of each of these features and then I have a slide that represents each one and for each feature I'm gonna go through I'm gonna explain uh, what it is and maybe a little bit about why we included this feature and how it might benefit your organization. Again, if you're watching this, um, you are most likely a Eureka customer. You might be a Salesforce implementation partner who uh, often uh, implements Eureka. You might work for Salesforce, um, or you might be thinking about purchasing Eureka and just kind of curious about what some of the improvements are that we do um, every season. So just right off the bat, we're gonna talk a little bit about error resolution. We're gonna talk about some really great capabilities coming with optical character recognition. We're enhancing the ability for people to interact with uh, a search experience inside of uh, the Eureka mobile application. We've got a ton of really awesome advancements coming with conditional display logic and we'll go through those. We're gonna talk about text rollups and then we've got some really great advancements um, or enhancements, I should say, coming with uh, the way that Eureka interacts with Salesforce field service. So let's talk about number one here. Uh, the first feature that we're really excited to show you is what we're calling improved error resolution. And really what this means is uh, when users are filling out a form inside of the Eureka application, as you know, you can make fields required, um, you can en enable data validation uh, where certain values need to be typed into a, a field and if those values aren't honored, uh, when the user tries to submit the form, they're gonna hit an error, right? Now, before, uh, Eureka did enforce these errors, but what we found with many of our customers and just doing some of our, our own looking at how we could enhance this experience, we found that it was a less than intuitive way to experience errors inside of the Eureka application. So um, we didn't make it easy for people to be able to understand where they should be going to resolve these errors, whether it be, again, a required question or perhaps a, um, a some sort of data validation issue. Well, with this Illuminate release that we're rolling out here, uh, what we've done is we've enhanced the error resolution process. So if the user tries to submit a form and there's an issue with some of the questions, they can navigate, you can see there in the little animation, they can navigate previous and next, and Eureka will automatically take them to each of the spots in the form that an error is present. And so they can simply resolve those errors by recapturing information, typing in a new answer, um, and then moving on to the next error. So this is really helpful if you have a short form and it's incredibly helpful if you have a really long form. Some of our customers have forms that are five, 10, 15 pages long perhaps, maybe more. And so it can be really, really helpful to be able to go through errors in a much more intuitive way. So that's what we're bringing you with improved error resolution. The next feature is something that we're really excited about as well. This is what we're calling optical, or what is known as optical character recognition. So what, what we always like to tell customers is we wake up every morning thinking about the different ways that we can enhance uh, a mobile user's ability to capture data. Uh, how can we make it so that not only do they have to capture all this information, but uh, can we prevent them from maybe having to type it, uh, to make uh, typos, to make mistakes, put in uh, false information on accident? What can we do to make the data capture even easier and faster? And most of you who are watching this might be familiar with our uh, barcode scanning capabilities. That's been generally available for a while. 
But one thing that we are excited to announce now is that we're rolling out optical character recognition. So the way that this works is you can, uh, for any of the questions in your form, uh, any of the supported questions I should say, you can tap and Eureka allows you to take a picture of something in front of you. This could be um, a plaque, it could be a card with a lot of different text on it, it could be a sheet of paper, uh, whatever it is that you're inspecting or assessing while using the app. And Eureka will actually read the text. You can see that there in the animation a little bit here as we go through. It will read the text in uh, that animation or in that photo and you can tap on the text and it will actually insert that text into the field on the form. So again, if you've got a barcode number or a serial number, Eureka can read those digits and it can easily uh, input those digits into any of the questions on the form. A couple things to note is you could take a single photo and you could fill out multiple questions. So Eureka will hold this photo as you continue through the form if you want it to. The other really cool thing that we're excited about is that it works both online or offline. So most of you know we build Eureka offline first. We want to make sure that it works for folks who don't have connectivity and this is something that we haven't left out for those folks. Uh, if they're offline, if they don't have access to the internet, they can still use optical character recognition in the Illuminate release. Next up is our enhanced search experience. Listen, there's many situations when users need to interact with a search um, question or a search uh, interface while using the Eureka application. They might be creating a new form and they have to relate that form to a record in Salesforce, or they might be filling out an existing form and there might be a lookup in that form. And in both of those situations, uh, we've supported this in the past, but the search experience was less than intuitive, I might say. Uh, we originally had it as you could only show kind of like the record name of the record that you're looking up. And this in many situations worked, but uh, if you were looking up maybe contacts in your system and you had 20 John Smiths, well, it didn't, it wasn't obvious which John Smith to pick from. And the same is true for auto numbered records, right? That was really tough for end users to understand which records they might, they might select. So what we've done now is we let you decide which data points you want to show users as they interact with a search. So for example, what you're seeing on the screen here is maybe I'm looking up contacts, but not only do I want the first and last name of a contact, but maybe I also want their email address, their phone number, their street address. Data like this, you can decide what's going to show up in each of these search experiences and it makes it really, really easy for your end users to understand which records they're selecting when they're interacting with search. We're running all this off of Salesforce field sets so you have unlimited flexibility in this way. Uh, we're not going to restrict you to a search layout uh, or something of that nature. You can use your own field sets, you can define which fields you want to use for each of the questions in your forms. Okay, another feature that we're really excited about is some of the enhancements that we're making to display logic. So the first one that I'll draw your attention to is that we're making it so that you can configure display logic at the section level. So picture that you have a form that has um, 50 different questions and each of those questions are kind of bundled into uh, a section maybe 10 questions per section. Um, and let's say that you only wanted to show certain sections based on answers to previous questions. Um, one thing that you would have had to have done in our previous releases or our previous versions of Eureka is you would have had to configure the visibility uh, of each of the questions inside of a section to show or hide based on uh, the answer to a previous question. But one thing that you can do in this release is you can, uh, at the entire section level, you can define when that sh section will show or hide. You don't have to configure it at every single question uh, anymore. This is really great for customers of ours who have a massive amount of questions that they want to hide in certain situations. Um, so it, it makes it much easier to configure a form. 
it makes it so that you uh, can you require less testing in certain situations. Uh, it requires less meticulous uh, work to go through each and every question to decide when you want it to show and when you want it to hide. So it, it helps you really gain some efficiencies and gives you some more power in terms of when questions are going to show. So one thing that we've received, one piece of feedback that we're, we've received from a lot of our customers is they want the ability to hide questions. Um, and so, as you know, our forms make it really easy for you to show questions in certain situations. But sometimes you need to hide information. You don't need the end user to see it, but maybe you want to use a data point or a field to drive display logic. So one thing that we're letting you do as part of this new release is we're giving the ability to, uh, for, for certain questions on the form, you can actually make them always hidden. So your end user won't ever see them as they're filling out the form, but that hidden field can actually help to drive um, conditional display logic. So it can act as an anchor point for some of the, the branching logic that you're putting inside uh, of your forms, and the end user would never ever have to see it. On the same note of display logic, we're excited to announce that linked sections are also going to be uh, capable of being shown or hidden based on answers throughout the form. So for example, in the animation that you see here, maybe you have a question on your form that says, would you like to add contacts to this account? And if the answer is yes, we have the ability to show the contacts related list the contact link section uh, right here inside the form and it's conditional um, so you can show it you can hide it based on answers uh, to other questions here in the form all right next up is something that we're calling text roll-ups so this one uh, takes a little bit of explaining but once you understand what's going on here it unlocks an incredible amount of flexibility in the way that you design your forms so the way that this works is Pretend as though you have a form where you have uh, what we call a linked section, right? Or think about it, for those of you who are less familiar with Eureka, it's kind of like a related list. And you're entering information into that related list. So you've got a couple of different records. Maybe you're typing in something like a medical condition or uh, a contact. And as you do that, you are filling out each of those related list records. Now what we've, what we've heard from our customers is they want the ability for if you enter some information in that related list, we want to show a series of questions outside that related list in maybe a different section. And what we've done to accomplish this is we've created what we call a text rollup. So you can take the information from a related list and you can roll it up into a consolidated field like a multi-select pick list, which is what you see here on the screen. And then that multi-select pick list will drive the visibility of subsequent questions. So again, think about it as you're filling out information, you are entering uh, line items, you're entering records into that related list. And as a result of doing that, you're going to show other really interesting questions in other places throughout the forum. So again, that's text rollups, and it's coming here uh, in this next release as well. Next, I'm going to talk just briefly about some Salesforce field service updates that we're rolling out. So number one is we have a lot of customers that use Eureka and Salesforce field service together. Um, and some of those customers have requested that uh, they want the ability to field link directly to uh, the field service work order line item object. It's very common in our implementations to link to work order, to service appointment, uh, and to some of the other objects that are commonly used in the field service data model. However, up until now, we didn't support field linking directly to the Wally, -E, and that is now something that we will do. So uh, the application here is if you have a form that is directly supposed to be directly related to each work order line item, maybe you have five work order line items and you have five different forms that need to be filled out, you can now field link directly to each of the Wallies. So you can have kind of a, a more direct relationship there. It's a huge win for a lot of our customers and we're really excited about it. 
the second thing is uh, form submission behavior. So one piece of feedback that we've received from our customers is, look, uh, my end users are out there using the Salesforce field service mobile application. They're offline. Uh, and when they're using the Eureka mobile application, they're filling out their forms there. And uh, when, they're, when they're finished with their forms, they want to make sure that those forms are completed even in an offline state or uh, they want to make sure that the forms themselves um, pass information back to the work order, for example, even if you're offline. Or they want to make sure that um, you can pass information back to Salesforce Field Service Mobile, and that utilizes a, uh, passes information into a Salesforce Field Service flow, and that flow then uh, manipulates information uh, while offline in that app. And so what we've done is we've created the ability for you to pass information from the Eureka mobile app to the Salesforce field service mobile application, even if you're offline. So here are some examples on the screen here. You might have a form that you're asking the question, what time was service restored? And the answer to that question can then be passed back to a flow in field service mobile and uh, that flow can then receive that variable that date and time and then you can use a, a screen flow from that point to um, to basically make adjustments to your data in the Salesforce field service application the same thing might be true with the device number that you scanned or even a static variable like my, are the forms complete yes they are true uh, so we can bit, we can design these variables at each form, and as soon as the user uh, clicks out of that form and is redirected back to the field service mobile application, these variables will come with it, and you can use them uh, to feed your your variables in um, in an inbound deep link into Salesforce field service mobile uh, in a screen flow. There's more features than this. Um, what I've covered here are just some of the ones that we're most excited about. Here's a few more, and there's even more in our release notes. Uh, things like form display logic, uh, serial form save, our template builder got much better and cleaner. Um, a lot of enhancements, small enhancements to the mobile application. Um, a new mobile SDK and deep link plugin, and so much more. Um, so if you would like to continue to learn about this release, here are some of the many resources that we offer uh, that can help you get the information that you're looking for between our website, videos like this one, uh, and then most specifically our release notes. These are areas that you can get more information about Eureka and the releases uh, that we have every season. So I want to thank you for spending time with me here. I hope that this has been informative and educational. Uh, as you consider the different ways that Eureka can work for your organization and especially the ways that maybe these new features that we're rolling out in this release uh, can support your Eureka implementation. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit us at eureka.io. Thank you very much.